We've seen in the last presentation that Intel has a lot of technologies in IoT products and not just processors with Intel architecture. But for this presentation, we'll focus on IoT hardware available to developers today. First, a bit of history. Let's see the non-Intel boards people have been using for the last years for IoT prototyping. First, we have Arduino. There's two great things about Arduino. One, the software used to program the microcontroller is super easy to use, even by beginners. And two, the pins used to connect the sensor or the extension shield are big enough to be used with your hands. No soldering is required with Arduino. To the good side, that's why Arduino is so popular with beginners or non-software developers as a huge community of uh, dedicated Arduino users online. The bad side, using a microcontroller is limiting the potential of the platform by definition. And we have the Raspberry Pi. This board was designed as a small and cheap PC. I don't think it's great as a PC at all, but as a small embedded prototyping platform, it's very popular. It's using an ARM processor, not Intel, so you can install Linux and program it with the language of your choice. Like Arduino, there are pins you can access, but you have a limited set of I.O. available, missing important things like analog inputs. To summarize, it's not for total beginners, but it's very popular with Linux developers interested in small embedded projects at home. The first way to evaluate uh, IoT prototyping boards is to understand what chip is being used. Arduino is using a 8-bit microcontroller. It's simple and predictable for people new to software development. But it's impossible to install a full system like Linux, so it's limited by nature. To have a full OS with networking features, the programming language of your choice on a lot of potential, a real processor is required. Then you have to evaluate the I.O. available on your board. If you develop on your laptop, you can only plug devices with high-level I.O. like a USB or PCI Express or FireWire. But most IoT sensors are a lot simpler than that, using low-level analog and digital I.O. They are also very cheap. To be really useful as an IoT platform, you must have digital on analog I.O. if possible. Some IoT platforms only have digital I.O. Others like Intel Galileo and Intel Edison have both digital and analog I.O. That's quite an important point. Then graphics. Many wearable projects like watches have two twin or a projector for Google Glasses. They look a lot like small mobile devices and require graphics, a dedicated hardware for graphics. We have such platform at Intel, uh, but for all the other IoT projects that don't require graphics, you don't need and you don't want graphics. Remember, display equals interaction, meaning brain I don't share on it's not scalable. You can have one or two mobile devices, but you can have 100 uh, mobile devices. So you have to keep it simple. In IoT, less is more. Networking. Network connectivity is really important in IoT. You may pick a platform without wireless internet and have a dongle for prototyping, like a USB dongle, but it's harder to switch to production. Power optimization are limited, usually. And dongles often propose limited features, Bluetooth instead of Bluetooth low energy. And they are quite expensive. And integration with a software on OS is not always trivial. So my advice would be to take platform with great networking inside from the beginning for prototyping then production. Form factor. It's convenient to have large boards with lots of I.O. for prototyping, but you need to design a new board for production. It takes a lot of money, time and skills. 
or you can take a board with a modular design. Your compute module has all the complex parts you won't need to redesign. On the simpler connectivity board can be replaced or designed easily. Power features now. A big difference between IoT prototypes on production is total power consumption of your solution. You would never plug a 3G dongle on a desktop and call it a mobile phone, right? Well, same thing for IoT. You need a very efficient processor with advanced sleep hibernation features or microcontroller if you decide to go with a microcontroller. You need power optimized wireless, great integration of all parts, and lots of software driver and OS optimizations for your solution. OS. Okay, we all like to prototype with our desktop operating system. It can be a big Linux distro like Ubuntu or Windows 10, Mac OS X. It's easy. All the packages are readily available. But a professional grade embedded project requires to start from scratch, perhaps use a substitute of Glibse, uh, control each piece of code added to the system and integrate with a large team of software developers. A typical open source OS for professional IoT projects is Yocto. The first board we released was the Intel Galileo. It has a 32-bit Quark-based system on chip, but also Arduino-compatible pins. It runs Linux so you could compare it to a P, but you can run most of your Arduino code on it too. We distributed thousands of them in universities worldwide, so you may very well have some in your building already. It's a fun prototyping board. Then we released Intel Edison. This one is totally different. It has all the features of a professional IoT board you can use in production. But it's as easy to use as a Linux PC. And it's both powerful and power efficient. And this year we are releasing Intel Curie. It works as a microcontroller with Bluetooth low energy included very low power on very small package. Curie and Edison perfectly complement each other. But remember that we are Intel, so if you need something more powerful or with graphics, we have it too. Minoboard Max prototyping board on the left, Intel Nuke in the middle with core processors, on a very compact HDMI stick on the right.